And it's yet another episode of 12 integrals where we're going to be doing some more geometrical problems. Hooray! Now in today's video, the actual process of the integration isn't really that important. But what's really important and more remarkable is the results that we get out of the integration itself. So let's get it right into the question. So this is the equation of y equals 1 over x. And we're only interested in the parts where x is greater than 1. And this will be a long line going all the way to infinity. And so let's say you can form some sort of a plane here, and then you could rotate this plane about the x-axis. And in doing so, you'll sweep up some 3D volume, looking a bit like this. And all I want you to do is to work out the surface area and the volume of this shape. All right, I'll give you a bit of time. Have a think about it. And if you think you have an answer, then we'll just continue. Now to work out the surface area and the volume of this shape, you'll have to do something similar to what we did for the past two days of 12 integrals. What you'll need to do is you'll need to chop this shape up into smaller pieces and then work out the surface area and the volume of those individual pieces and then finally add them all up in a sum. So this is my badly drawn diagram of the line y equals 1 over x and the solid slash volume that we're interested in. And we need to find the volume of this shape here and the surface area of it, which will be this part here. This will be the surface area. So what we need to do is we need to break this shape down into smaller pieces where we can actually work out, you know, the volume of and the surface area of and then summing it back up altogether. So I'm going to break it down into small disk like this. So here's one of the disk. The disk will look like this, it will be a round bit and then it will sort of be slanted like that because that's the nature of the graph. And of course it will have some radius of r which will equal to 1 over x as you can see up there. Let me actually write that a bit clearer. And its thickness will equal to dx. I'm going to just use dx rather than using delta x and then turning it into a dx later on just for you know simplicity reasons. So first we'll try to find the volume of this shape here. And to find the volume, we need to find the volume of one of these small disks first. And I'll call that small volume dv. So what is dv? Well, if we approximate this disk to not be really slanted and just be straight disk, then the volume, well, will be close enough to like the actual volume, right? And so the actual volume for a disk, which will look sort of just like this, with thickness dx and radius 1 over x, well, dv will just equal to um, the surface area times the thickness, right? That would just That's just the standard equation for the cylinder. Um, the surface area will be pi r squared, thickness will be dx, and r will be 1 over x in this case, so r squared will be 1 over x squared, so I'll just write it like that. And so there, from there, we can actually find the volume of the shape and so to find the volume of the entire shape I'll call that V we will have to integrate these small volumes here and where do we integrate from well we need to start from 1 which is where the first piece is and we go all the way to infinity because this shape is infinitely long so the limit of integration goes from 1 to infinity and we can replace this integral I'm going to take pi outside to be a constant go 1 to infinity I'm going to change the x squared to x to the power of minus 2 dx. And this integral can be evaluated easily. I'll skip the evaluations and you can show yourself that will equal to pi. Now the next thing we can try to find is try to find the surface area of the volume, which if we think about it should also be quite obvious, but we'll start trying to work it out mathematically anyways. Now I'll draw out the picture of the, each individual disk again, but I'll draw it slightly bigger this time just because I need to show you something interesting about it like that. Now, the surface area of each individual disk, I'll only consider this part here. We'll ignore like these round bits here because if you imagine, it will go all the way end to end anyway, so we can, that could be ignored. And that will equal to whatever this length is all around the circumference times this length. Basically, if you take this out and you expand it into one long disk just to, you know, to like lay it all out, then it will equal to this length here, which will just be like whatever the circumference is, which is 2 pi times r, 
let this be R, and then this thickness would just be whatever this length is. I know it's slanted, and if you lay it out, this slanted will actually make a difference. And I'll call this length for now, I'll call it B. It's going to be quite tricky to find what B is. So instead, let's approximate this shape to look like a disc, sort of like this. Right? If we approximate this disc to just be, well, non-slanted like this, then this thickness instead will be dx. And we can see that dx is actually going to be shorter than b, because dx is straight out, but b is sort of slanted like that. And so if we let this thickness here instead be dx, then this surface area here, which I'll call dA, will actually be an underestimate of the actual well, surface area. And so the actual surface area dA would equal to 2 pi r times b, which will be greater than 2 pi r dx, because b is going to be longer than x, as you can see from this diagram, where b is a slanted side and x is just the disc going straight forward. But you know, B is a lot harder to work with, so we'll just work with DX. Even though we don't know the exact value of DA, this will still be good enough, as you'll see why in just a sec. And of course, R is going to be 1 over X, as we can see from above there. So this would just basically be 2 pi over X DX. And then we could find the actual surface area of the shape. Um, and this will be as follows. A, which will be the surface area, will equal to the integral of dA going from 1 to infinity. And dA, well, we know is going to be greater than this. So the actual area must be larger than the integral from 1 to infinity of 2 pi dx over x. And you can verify this by yourself, which I won't show, that this will actually go to infinity. So somehow we have created a shape which has got a finite volume but an infinite surface area. Here's a paradoxical way you can think about this shape. Somehow you could fill the shape up with paint but you can't coat the inside surface of the shape completely with paint. Now of course you could argue that such paints could not physically exist. There is no way that you can actually paint the surface of this shape so that it's completely flat and two-dimensional. The paint will always take some thickness and when you get to the far end, eventually you won't be able to paint it anymore. But then if you think of this in terms of some hypothetical paint that could actually do this, it still remains a really puzzling thing to think about of how there could be a shape with actual finite volume, but in infinite surface area. Now this peculiar shape, in fact, does have a name. It's called the Gabriel's Horn. It could also be referred to as Torricelli's Trumpet, named after the first mathematician to study such shape, Torricelli. And this question really puzzled mathematicians back in the old days, and really forced mathematicians to question the whole concept of infinity, and made them think about how such shapes could possibly make sense. But anyways, this is all I have time for. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you again tomorrow.